Hi everyone, my name is Sandra. Welcome back to my channel. So today is my July 2021 bullet journal setup. Again, I'm using my Rhodia Rhodiorama notebook. And again, it's a soft cover, so I do have it enclosed in this leather cover that my sister handmade for me for, I think it was about three birthdays ago. I'll leave all the information linked down below, so go ahead and check that out if you're interested in handmade leather journal covers or handmade goods um, made out of leather. However, we are doing a bee theme, so I've wanted to do this for a long time, and again, it seemed pretty popular, everybody was doing it, so I decided to um, put my own spin on it, but at the same time, I did borrow a few concepts from my inner creative and Elizabeth journals and I found them both on Pinterest so I'll leave everything all of my inspiration linked down below if you want to go ahead and check that out for yourself but um, I found that it was actually really difficult to learn how to draw a bee and so my first few bees kind of sucked and I think I got better as I went along but uh, I did draw quite a few and I also kept this whole bullet journal spread very cohesive and the one thing I'm changing this month is I will start to do dailies uh, towards the end as you you won't see the dailies in this video but I do a weekly page and then I'll just do da dailies from there so that is the new thing and the second thing is I was so in love with watercolor from the month of June that I tried to use my Mozart real brush pens so basically they're the same as the Kiritake Zig clean color brush pens with the real brush on the end and um, so what I was doing here was laying down some color and then dipping the tip of the brush in some water just to kind of reduce the color payout because I didn't want it to be so bright so I did a few experiments and as you'll see coming uh, towards the next few spreads, I decided to stop using them as much as I did because I do go through the paper because it's just too wet. So I, instead I ended up using a zebra mild liner and then I just added a little bit of the darker color from the real brush pen on top. And it worked a lot better that way, but you have to really be careful on these thin pages. With the Rodeo Rodeo Rama pages, they're quite thin. I believe they're 80 or 90 GSM. And they honestly don't hold up to many brush pens or especially watercolor. So, and I know that. I just was trying to kind of see how far I could go. So, uh, but anyway, on the left side, I didn't really want to do a quote. So I just said, be happy. And I drew a little B. And on the right side, similar thing. But of course, I put the month of July. And I decided to draw a circle with a whole bunch of honeycombs inside and then some bees surrounding it. As you see here, this is where I found out that it went through the other page, but I continued. Instead of really waiting for it to dry, I just drew right over the page. So I started with decorating, and you will notice I did do the honeycomb smaller on this page, and I've done that uh, just to kind of play around to see what I liked best, because um, my bullet journal, it'll be aesthetically pleasing no matter what I do but I'm not a perfectionist where I have to have everything exactly perfect and if I did do that I would probably drive myself crazy and so anyway I decided again to change my style just a tad here 
and uh, normally I do like a full calendar page spread but I decided to keep it to one page because I honestly don't really use this as much except for more of a reference really I will put appointments and stuff on there but as long as I write really really tiny I should be able to handle it and um, I yeah I kept it to one page and again um, I used these banners actually throughout the spread which I really like I haven't used banners in a long time and so that's kind of like a tip for you that if you want to switch things up just make smaller calendars or add cute little banners or um, drop shadows and little things like that will really spice up your spreads This page here it will be my master task list. So normally what I do again is on my calendar page, it would be a full page, but it doesn't take up all of the room. So I usually do a tiny little um, you know, monthly task list on one side of the page. And I like this again because it's changing it up and I don't get so bored. So I just decided to decorate the border a little bit with a few honeycombs and a bee. Moving on to my July calendar. Again, another form of calendar, but I always say that I like to see things in two different formats. So of course I have the actual calendar on the left page, and then this is usually where I write down all of the really long stuff that won't fit in that smaller calendar. So I decided to split the page up and I wrote the dates down the center. I find that this gives me more organization instead of just having the dates on the left hand side and I can write different things. So for instance, when my son was in school, because obviously it's July, he'll be on summer holiday, I would put all of the things associated with school on one side of the page and everything on the left would be errands or grocery shopping or appointments, but I will figure out a different use for the other side of the calendar. So the spread across from the calendar I decided to call goals and monthly focus and now here's kind of where I messed up and obviously I'm just going to leave it because it's already done but I decided to do goals and monthly focus here so I'm tracking projects, personal, business and then I have a mid-month check-in at the bottom and that's all in great and everything but then the following spreads I decided to do an ideas page so obviously I can write down my YouTube video ideas blog and sticker ideas but then next to that I had another monthly goals page that was more focused on learning and books to read and like kind of reiterating my yearly goals so what I wish I'd done is put the two goals pages together and the idea pages with the calendar page it would have made more sense kind of reflecting back on it now and the only reason I have the two separate goals pages is because I'm really focusing on quarterly goals. So this will be the third quarter starting in July. And as of filming and editing this video, it's still June. So I'm doing a lot of planning and prep work because when I did create my goals this year, I was pretty vague and I really want to narrow down and get a little bit more detailed just so I can wrap up this year and um, actually see some progress being done because I feel like when you narrow down your goals even further it's easier to tackle the things on your list so that's why I'm really focused on it and I was it was in my head I was thinking about it so that's why I had all of these goals pages
So I've gone back to adding a weight tracker in my bullet journal just so I do it because I had added it to my happy planner at one point and I just forgot about it. It got lost amidst all of the pages. So I'm bringing it back and um, on the following page will be my dream log. I like having those two together. It just seems to make sense to me. But to be honest, my dream log isn't... I don't want to say it's not working, it's just I don't remember my dreams, so usually it's like this lost spread that never gets used, but when I don't put it in my bullet journal, I'll end up having a dream that I wish I'd wrote down, and then it goes into my regular journal, and then it kind of gets lost, because I, I seriously have like a hundred journals in the basement that I've written in since I was like able to write. And I don't want these like thoughts and like feelings just to be lost amidst all of these journals. I want them to be in my bullet journal collection, which I'll keep separate. So in saying that, the dream log stays. Now moving on to my trackers. So as per usual, I always do a habit tracker and a mood tracker. And I guess if, if some people were to ask why I would do a habit tracker, these are things that I want to see myself doing every month. There are some things I just never do and I probably should just get rid of them. And that's kind of when it comes into reflection. So at the beginning of each month or the end or whenever you wanna do it, just kind of look back onto the previous month and say, okay, what do I need? What do I need to get rid of? What's working, what isn't? And uh, sometimes I just keep it in there because what if I use it? So that's why, but I did decide to change it this month and do the little individual calendar boxes instead of the graph. I've been loving the graph recently, but I just wanted to change it because I do that every now and then. And it looks neat on the page anyway, so I thought it was kind of cute. I did a little bit of jet decorating with the honeycombs at the top of the page and on the right I do a mood tracker and I decided to do honeycombs for that as well so I have all of these honeycombs which will eventually be filled in with differing shades of yellow and it will look really cool when it's all filled out. This is my doodle a day page, which is the most boring spread in this whole 
um, set up and that's just because I leave it blank so I can do a whole bunch of drawing in there. Um, I never color it. I probably could, but I just don't. I just leave it black and white. And moving on to the very last spread. So usually in this journal anyway, I've been doing like the end of month review goal setting spreads. And the only reason I didn't in this one is because I am doing daily logs after this page and I don't know when I'll be done. And saying that, this will be the end, like the last month in this current bullet journal. I know it's only been three, but it's because I'm gonna start doing daily logs and I've kind of calculated how many pages that I'll need for that. And it will get me to the end of July and August I'll have to start a new bullet journal. So um, keep tuned for the bullet journal setup that will be coming the mid of July and I'm excited for that because I'll be using a Scribbles That Matter B5 notebook for that setup and I'm just really excited to get into those notebooks. It's always exciting to crack open a new one. So this is my weekly spread and this is one of the inspiration pages I took from Pinterest. I didn't uh, do it exactly but the general, um, you can definitely see the similarities anyway. And um, I decided to add groceries to the left hand page. I just like to keep it separate so I have an area I can just take my entire bullet journal to the store with me and cross everything off as I go. And the right hand side is a small to-do list with my weekly um, tasks that I need to get done and a tiny calendar just so I can see what week it is. And I really admire the setup. I love it so much. Um, and you can see that as I had progressed with the honeycombs, it's easier if you do the honeycombs larger. And also just using that zebra mile liner made it so much quicker. And if you were to use paint, it would take forever because you have to make each of the little shapes like individual. It's just harder with paint and a paintbrush, I find. But uh, brush pens are amazing. As you guys know, I have a lot of reviews of brush pens on my channel. We will be doing the final flip through here shortly. And again, I just want to take this moment to say thank you to all of my subscribers, everyone who stuck around with me throughout the last couple of years. I really appreciate that you did. And I'm really excited to see my channel growing. We're almost at a thousand subscribers, so it's really super exciting for me. Hopefully we'll hit that number before the end of the year. And I just, again, I appreciate every single one of you and I'm really glad that you enjoy my bullet journal setups. I know I think my my sticker video is probably the most popular but uh, definitely bullet journal stuff and um, brush pen reviews are the most popular so again if you guys have any ideas for me let me know down in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see or have me make or create I would love for your input but thank you so much again for tuning in um, if you're new here I would love if you would subscribe and join our family and hit that bell notification button to be notified every time I upload a video. Make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up and we will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye!